and let's go stream it on Facebook. I'm trying to sort this out yesterday was a challenge. <laughs> going. All right. It looks like we are live now. Yippee. All righty. I'm hoping that everyone on Facebook can see this now. Hello, if you are watching on Facebook, it says we are live. <laughs> so everybody, anybody who is watching, I'm keeping an eye on my phone here just to see if anybody's going to join us. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, I just wanted to introduce you all to um, Lisa, who's one of my amazing clients who absolutely nailed her goal, uh, her weight loss goal in the first 12 weeks working together. And, um, you know, I thought I would love to get her on screen here with you all and just have a chat about what she was experiencing, I guess, before, you know, before joining me, the, you know, she'd been on diets, um, I guess, probably a lot of her life, like many of us have been and um you know and this time really changed for her so i wanted to bring her on and just you know i have her explain in her own words um the, the difference that that um doing something differently this time made for her so hi lisa <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome welcome um yeah so tell us a little bit about you to start with and um what you were experiencing i guess before joining up with me and what was life like for you? Um, so for really about the last five years, um, I had a big move. I live in the United States and I moved from Georgia to Minnesota. And I was going through a lot of stress and um, gained, I, I kind of did a, a big yo-yo diet. I've been up and down my whole life, but the last five years was pretty significant. And I would gain weight and then Monday was a new change for me and I was gonna start a diet and I'd lose the weight and I would do okay for a week or two. And then I would treat myself and undo everything I had just done and, and gain some. And um, so my weight creeped up a lot. And um, I, at my highest, when I reached out to you, I was about 178, yeah. which was way bigger than I had ever been in my entire life. And I kept failing and just, I was miserable and I felt like a failure and I, I just felt weak and that I could never accomplish this. And I saw you on Facebook, found you through Facebook, and I reached out to you. I sent a private message to you, which I've never done anything like that before. Um, and I actually cried the whole time I wrote that. Oh, wow. And I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't, I don't think I've ever told you that, I but I did. No. I basically just told you, I, I am weak. I'm a failure. I can't do this. I need help. And that was when you reached back out and we did the one-on-one -on -one and I went into that, that first call and I thought, I'll give it a shot. You know, I'll keep an open mind, but I'll hear what she has to say. And then I will think about it. And 
by the end of all, I was like, sign me up <laughs> because I, I really thought I've never done it like this before. I, you know, I was to lose weight just by being on my own and working out. I just, I could never, I was never successful. And so I thought I, I have to do this for myself, which will then affect my kids and my health. And I just, if I'm not going to invest every part of my life into this, nobody else is going to do it for me. So <clears throat> wow. here we are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad you did too. So talk to me about what sort of diets you'd done in the past. What sort of things had you tried? I guess particularly where you had lost some weight, but then it all came back on. So I think there's might be a few other people circulating in the group who've done the diets as well and have had some sort of success and then, you know, found it's come back on. So what, what sort of diet? Um, the biggest weight loss that I had was when I went vegetarian. I still had dairy. Um, I do have problems with dairy, so I can only have, you know, so much of it, but that was where I lost about 20 pounds. Um, and that was right before I moved. Um, but I've done, you know, restricted my calories to like almost nothing. And, um, I tried some of the fad diets, um, some of the supplements, which always I would start doing those, but then I would get scared because of the health implications of it. And so I usually would stop those pretty quickly. But yeah, just a lot of the fad diets that are out there and just really cutting my calories to you know, an insane amount that you can live off of for a couple of days and then you just, you know, fall off. You <laughs> fall off the, the body so. does need food. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you, you basically tried starving yourself as well and that doesn't work for very long. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Restriction yep. diets. Yeah. That causes that restriction binge cycle that we all know so well. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> So, um, I mean, apart, I mean, obviously weight loss was one of your goals when we were, when you wanted to start, you know, working with me, but was that, did you have any other goals that you were hoping to achieve? I, I, the biggest one was weight loss, but I really needed to get out of the negative brain that I was living in. I mean, I beat myself up on a daily basis. Um, and I just, I, I couldn't get out of, I was, it was almost like I was in a circle where I just could not break free from that. And just being stronger. Um, I have a daughter who it, it really hit me when she started, I started hearing the negative talk from her. Oh, yeah. um, and that was a big, huge thing for me. And I was like, I have to change this now because she's nine and talking like this this isn't right yeah, yeah, yeah. that was um, a big factor for me yeah I, I remember you talking about that quite a lot and you know wanting to I guess break a bit of a generation trend within yep. your family yeah that was huge yeah so, um yeah talk to me talk to us about um some of the I guess biggest shifts that you made uh, in your life to achieve this goal? You know, what, what were some of the big things that really did it for you, do you think? I decided that when we started our weekly sessions, um, I was going to commit 100% to the whole food plant-based. Mm. Um, and you know, I don't like to call it a diet. I like to call it a lifestyle. Absolutely, same here. <laughs> um, so I, I committed to that a hundred percent. I jumped in with both feet. Um, I went 
pretty grudgingly into no oil. <laughs> That's right. That was the right. You weren't sure at the beginning, were you? <laughs> so I said, I just said to Lisa, just try it for seven days and see how you go. Or you can do anything for seven days. <laughs> It was a I went into that and I was like I'll try it but it's not going to happen and literally it was days in that I was on board 100% with that I'm still working on salt um I've drastically cut my salt intake we all need but, a little bit of salt in our diet you know we do need some sodium but you know yeah. don't go completely yeah, but cutting the oil was a huge thing for me um I don't do a lot of sugar as I've gotten older. I want more carbs than yep. sweets. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> cutting the sugar out wasn't too big of a deal for me, but um, oil and salt was, that was a big one. Yeah. Um, I've, I'm always, I've always been a big water drinker, so that wasn't too hard. And um. Yeah, cutting dairy wasn't really too hard for me because um, it I, I don't react very well when I have a lot of dairy. So I had pretty much cut out milk anyway. And, you know, maybe a little cheese was all I could have. So that wasn't too hard of a deal for me. But um, and then just getting committing to getting back and uh, I prefer to go on a treadmill. Um, just getting back on my treadmill every single day which I struggle sometimes but I'm <laughs> doing better it's more of a uh it's definitely more of a habit for you now than it was though what isn't it right yeah talk yeah. to us about how you make the jumping on the treadmill uh, enjoyable I really like this story <laughs> Um, you mean about the pictures that I've got? And whose voice you like listening to? <laughs> so I um, listen to Simon Hill's podcast because I love, I love his, what he, his message, yeah. but I love his voice too. His We've voice is barely crushes on Simon Hill. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just, I will listen to music you know crank music up and or listen to a podcast um sometimes i'll watch a movie um just something i do better when it takes my mind off of okay 20 more minutes you know 10 more minutes um when i take my mind off of it um and it's kind of me time um yeah you know, i'm saying the other thing yeah how do you yeah Uh, that was the other thing I was going to say too you've decided that that's your you time yeah talk about that yeah I'm a single parent so when she wakes up it's on until she goes to bed and so that's just kind of my me time that I try to do something that I enjoy uh just for me while um every single day and because we should do that anyway um and I kind of I have a small townhouse, so it's it's kind of in the corner. Um, but I put up my favorite quotes and and sayings and pictures that mean a lot to me. So I'm kind of surrounded by that. And beautiful. Um, good. Very I think good. you put up a picture of that. I sent you a picture of. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> And um, talk about some of the shifts um, that happened for you, I guess, outside of just the food and the habits, some of the, um, I guess, mindset shifts and, um, yeah, I don't even know how to put it, the, 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 the real things that, that helped you stay on board, stay tra on track and made you realize that it's not just about the food when it comes to weight loss. The Biggest, biggest thing for me was when you talked to me about the ancient brain. Because before that, I, every time, every time I ever went on a diet or tried to lose weight or tried to work out anything, I, I would fail at it. And I would, it just, 
I couldn't do it. And I thought I'm weak. I'm a failure. I can't accomplish anything. I can't accomplish any goals that I'm setting. And when you explained the ancient brain and that when we start something new, it's our brain's way of trying to keep us safe and go back to old habits and old routines. That opened my eyes to I'm not weak and I'm not a failure. And it's, I, I learned to dial down the volume on that brain and dial up the logic and reasoning. And I 100% believe that that's why I have stuck with this because it's been over 12 weeks now. Yeah. And um, I believe that's why I had the success that I did because that was a huge huge thing for me to realize that because I thought that it was me mm. and that yeah yeah that was a huge huge one for me um and then you know just what we talked about in in our latest call that we just did was asking questions that we ask ourselves in a different way because mine were always negative why can't I do this? Why am I so weak? And I'm learning to ask it in a different way. Like not why am I so weak, but how can I be stronger? So it puts a more positive spin on it. And I'm trying to do that anyway, to be more positive and not so negative. That's great. That's great. And that, you know, again, that's that habit part of our brain that just is repeating the patterns that we've had decades you know we've been doing for decades the brain likes to be efficient this is why it doesn't like change change is scary <laughs> it's life-threatening <laughs> but it's not really <laughs> so it wants to be really efficient and it wants to keep replaying those old patterns that's why changing what we're doing can be so hard that's yeah why having some support um, and learning this sort of stuff can be powerful. So yeah, talk to me, you said that you said at the beginning, like you'd always tried to do this on your own. What do you think it was about having some support, some guidance um, uh, that made the difference for you? I think just having you help me to look at things in a different way and to realize things that I never, I probably never would have known about the ancient brain unless you have told, you know, told me about it. And the other um, big thing for me was I had lived my life by the number on the scale and whatever my brain perceived that perfect number for me to be. Um, I never did measurements. I've never done my measurements and I've never done a symptom tracker mm, mm. and I didn't put the two together. So the symptoms and needing to lose the weight, I, I don't know. I just never connected them. Mm. And then, so when I did the symptom tracker from the first check-in point to the four weeks, I saw a huge, that to me was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are shifts going on in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that can be the biggest surprise for a lot of people too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was definitely a big moment for me with a big aha where even if you don't see a big shift on the scale you can see a shift in in measurements yep. and also in how you're feeling yeah. so yeah that kind of opened my brain to okay maybe I shouldn't just look at what the scale says and <laughs> and you know, the scale like I was on the scale there were days where I'm not kidding you I would be on the scale like four times a day wow yeah <laughs> That was how I was, I was raised and I grew up. You get on the scale and you live by that number and yeah. Wow, so. wow. Um, so it would have been a little different for you getting on the scale once every four weeks instead of four times a day. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Yep. 
Actually, um, I remember, you know, you had, you like crushed your first uh, weigh-in. Um, I think you got to about almost half of your goal within the first four weeks. Talk about what went through your mind at that point, because I think a lot of people are going to resonate with this. I, I think I cried. <laughs> um, but I just felt hopeful and I was so proud of myself because it was like, oh my gosh, look what I have done. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I set a conservative goal for the first 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to make it too easy, but I didn't want to make it too hard. Yeah, exactly. There's no point, you know, uh, like falling short and feeling bad about yourself, right? Even if you've right. actually done a really good thing. Yeah. <laughs> when I lost almost half of it, in just the first month, I was blown away, but I was so proud of myself that I had done something that I had never been able to do. Yeah. But talk to us about that little voice that crept in after the pride. What? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that little, that shitty habit brain thought that kept coming up for you after yeah. after the pride kicked uh, after the pride sort of died down <laughs> after the initial excitement went away there was my negative little voice that said yeah but you probably could have lost more <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. I do have that 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 I have to fight that where it's like I lost seven pounds in the first month and I was yeah, I, I was like, mm, maybe if you would have, you know, been better, been more, you know, strong in your diet and worked out every day instead of, you know, five days a week, you probably could have lost more. So yeah, I still have that. Mm, that's definitely, but that was definitely something to, uh, for us to work on in that session, wasn't it? And recognize that, um, you know, good things are happening here. Oh my goodness, we're almost, you know, you're a third of the way in and you're halfway there already. And I was like, I was convinced that you would be able to stretch your goal and you just kept doing it. Instead, and so instead of um, saying, you know, having that voice saying you could have done better, you know, you, maybe if you'd done this, you would have got a better result. We said, okay, that just means there's opportunity. So what if you do that for the next four weeks, the next really? eight weeks? What what different result can you dial in? So, um, yeah, that's, that's great. And so, yeah, yeah. Essentially, you smashed your 15 pound target. Well, you got to 14 pounds within eight weeks. And we said, right. let's reel it in, see what you can do in, in the 12 weeks. And you got to 20 by the end of it. That was that was really amazing. How did it feel? You know, at the end? I so initially there was that happiness and that joy and excitement and all of that, but it's been about three weeks, I think. Yeah. A little over three weeks. Yeah. And I still, I find myself now, it's it's kind of when I think about other things that like, I don't think I can do that. Mm-hmm. My brain now says, yeah, but you know what? You lost 20 pounds and you didn't think you could do that and you did it. And so it's kind of given me more confidence in just in my life in general, not just because of the weight loss, but because it was something that I could never, ever do. And I did it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I still have that where it'll creep into my thoughts. Like, you know what, you can, you can do this. You can do whatever, because you had this huge obstacle and you did it. Mm-hmm. I mean, 20 pounds is a lot. And And so I'm over, I'm still, yeah, I still catch, you know, a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I'm like, yes, that's awesome. But I think the confidence that it's given me to, I can set my mind to a goal Mm. and I can achieve it. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, learning that it's, it's our mind that keeps us back, holds us back from achieving what we want to in life, right? That it's not, necessarily it's our mind that holds us back from doing the things that are going to get us to the goal um mm-hmm. learning that i think has um really opened things up for you and you're just going now well, what else can i do what if and like the session we had like um a couple of days ago where it's about asking those 
um, more powerful questions um, instead yes. of why can't I do this? Oh, well, how can I do this? Because your brain's yeah. going to answer that question. Why can't I do this? Because you're shit, because you're useless, because you're, <laughs> well, how can I do this? Well, we do it this way, you do it that way. <laughs> your brain is going to go to work and answer that question. So, yeah, I think that's, um, you know, understanding that it's only our mind that holds us back from achieving anything we want to do, including, you know, losing weight, I think has been a real eye opener um, for, for you on this journey, which has been amazing. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like, um, you know, for me, for so much of my life, it was the number on the scale. Yeah. And it, yeah, Justine, my mom was a huge, huge uh, factor in all of that. She lived her life on the scale and, you know, was very vocal <laughs> about it. Yeah. But everything that has to do with that. Um, and so just kind of re retraining my brain to ask questions differently and to kind of look more positively. I, I, I can tell that I just, I haven't just lost the weight. I can tell that, you know, emotionally, mentally, I'm, I'm changing too. And I'm, I feel like I'm getting stronger and I'm, I'm looking at things in a different way. Yeah. So yeah, that was good. I was going to ask you next, you know, how, how do you feel differently now to how you were feeling? Um, what was it? We've been, it would have been 15 weeks ago now. Yeah. So, oh um, my gosh. Yeah. Total 180. Like I, I don't beat myself up. I mean, I really did. I was at that point where I would just look in the mirror and burst into tears. And I didn't go out and didn't do things. I mean, as much as you could, um, yeah. but I purposely was, you know, using excuses to not go out and not be around people. And um, because I, I didn't like the way I looked and I didn't have anything that fit in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's, it's a total 180. I can feel it, not just in the weight that I've lost, but how I'm feeling physically and mentally and emotionally too. Beautiful, beautiful. And how many more clothes are you able to fit into now in your wardrobe? <laughs> I, <laughs> so that was one of my big things um, was I am stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not going to go out and buy a bunch of new bigger clothes mm -hmm. so I only had this little tiny little section in my closet that I was wearing and um yeah I've actually gotten rid of things because they're too big and not because they're too small and that is an amazing that's one of my favorite times <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. Well done. So um, if you were just to summar up, summarize, sum up, um, I guess some of your key learnings or key takeaways from working together so far, what would you say they are? Um, I think just, I mean, you've really helped me to look at things in a more positive way and not not the negativity that I, I was always, that was my go-to and that was how I was thinking about things and asking myself different questions. Um, I, I didn't really realize that I was using food and wine as comfort. Um, and, and you've helped me to see that and to make the changes to find other things in my life that give me comfort. Um, and I, one of the things that I love the most that you said to me was to think of body fat as stored energy <laughs> and not just unwanted fat. So I can have the energy to go get on my treadmill. <laughs> um, I love that. I think about that when I'm, you know, not wanting to get on the treadmill and I'm like, nope, I have all this stored energy I need to get rid of. So I'm going to do that. I love that. Um, yeah, just 
to not focus on the number on the scale. And you, right now I'm getting on the scale once a month when I do my check-in for you. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge thing for me. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. you're at the point where you could, you could go back to um, weighing yourself a little bit more often because that scale is no longer um, scary to you. You're not reliant on how the scale is not going to determine how you feel about yourself. You know, you're not reliant on that number to either make you feel good or, you know, make you feel bad. So you're, you're probably at that point where you could weigh yourself a little bit more often if you wanted to, but I'm still a little scared of the number. (laughs) And I think it's because we can work I don't want to go backwards in this journey. I don't want to go back to that. So I, I have a little tiny fear of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand that. But, you know, uh, anytime that does happen, it's just an opportunity to uh, either work on how that scale is still creating that emotion for you yeah. or just look at what it is that happened for the week or that period and say, okay, what is it What is it that we can shift going forward? So yeah. looking looking at it with that, like adult logic and reasoning brain instead of the habitual uh, shitty, itty bitty, shitty committee mind. (laughs) (laughs) All righty. Well, thanks for um, the chat today, Lisa. Any any last words you want to leave people with um, before we finish up? I, I just, I think if I can do it, like, anybody can do it and it I really feel like it's just how you think about it so if you focus on the negative it's gonna be like the what can't I eat you know instead of focus on what can I eat and I get to get on the treadmill and I get to you know get up today and it's a new day and and all of that so yeah and I just I I just thank you so much because you've helped me so, so much. Oh, I'm so glad that I could. I'm so glad that we crossed paths and I'm so glad that, um, you know, I was able to help you in this way and you've had amazing results. And I hope that your story um, has in some way, you know, inspired anybody else who may be feeling stuck um, out there. Uh, You know, this definitely can be done. There's, There's a there's no reason it can't like how many people before you before me before everybody else who has achieved that result how many other people have been able to achieve it so it's just um you know having one having some belief and two having some positivity about the journey and and not um i guess giving into fear and you know that feeling of getting stuck and please if anybody you know if anybody out there wants um some help and support doing this um to have this amazing result that Lisa has had um please drop me a note and we can have a one-on-one chat and um just see where you're at and just see um you know if we are a good match um to work together so um I just wanted to thank you again Lisa for coming and doing this live for us today I know you were a little bit nervous (laughs) but uh you did you did well. <laughs> you did awesome. So thank you. Um, and we will sign off now, guys. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you again soon. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. And-